<laughs> Good morning, friends. <laughs> I have to look once in a while to find out whether it's morning or evening. <laughs> well, well, I'm happy to be here this morning. It's warm, and you sure got a warm reception. We don't have no more springtime. We have summer and winter here, don't we? Everything seems to be out of cater somehow. Oh, what made me late? I, I'm house cleaning. <laughs> And I was stiff and sore this morning, and I got up in plenty of time, but I didn't realize a woman had so much work to do to help get three children ready and then get off to Sunday school. Oh, my. whole lot to do, more than I thought there was to do. And I thought, well, now, last evening was working, and, and I, 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 I come in off the evangelistic field and help me out. I didn't labor hard to get a hold of. Mm. I offered thirty-five dollars a week to somebody watch a baby. <laughs> Nobody would do it. A fellow wrote a piece of paper here not long ago. Of course, this don't go to this. Said he was up here, some kind of a politician up here in Kentucky. Said he had been in the army twice. He had been wounded three times as a hero. He had lived a citizen in the neighborhood. He had done many things, rescued two children's lives, one from a creek and one from something else. Forget what all he had to do. And finally, he thought, well, to help keep the neighborhood correct, he would run for an office. And when he did. Out of 100,000 people, he got five votes. He asked the sheriff if he could get a sawed-off shotgun to help him get out of the neighborhood. That was dangerous to even live around. <laughs> he had not enough friends to help him get out of town. <laughs> That's American gratitude, though, isn't it? That's right. In America, the more you do, the more you're expected to do. That's right. The more expected of you. Well, um, I want to pass my compliments this morning on how clean and nice the church looks. And as they come up, they got a door there to get better circulation. So that's really nice. Ever who's uh, on the trustee board here and helped instigate this, that certainly was mighty nice. And it's a nice, clean job. I think Brother Hall, if I'm not mistaken, did it. That's a very nice job. Now, it's a little late, but you know how holiness people are. <laughs> He just don't have no certain time, do we, Brother Claude, Brother Beeson? No. He just gets everything just because we take it. Had wonderful meetings down in the South, but I could only talk just a few days ago. I preached for four months straight, and I didn't have enough voice even to, to even whisper. <laughs> I just had to kind of make motions to my wife, you know, <laughs> what I wanted. And it's kind of, uh, and then after that, and coming back up here, we've got kind of some of this hypocritical weather we've been having. My, Cold one day and hot the next, I took a real, real old-fashioned flu. And I got up a couple days ago and got started again. And so we're thankful to the good Lord over all of his goodness and mercy to us and, and how good he's been. We had wonderful meetings down there. The Lord blessed us exceedingly abundantly. And last night near midnight, Brother Woods called me down to his house and Brother Oregon, right on the phone, won't they start whistling? So it's too much going <laughs> for an old man. <laughs> uh, so um, now our next meeting begins on the 11th of this next month at Cato Tabernacle at Indianapolis. At, uh, at Cato Tabernacle at Indianapolis from the 11th through the 15th, and then from there over to to um, Minneapolis, from Indianapolis to Minneapolis, Christian businessman. Now, I think Brother Neville called me, and I want to show my, or express my appreciation to he and the Neville trio that came down and sang for that funeral for me they had the day before yesterday. And uh, I asked Brother Neville didn't have any singers, the Lydic family, and Mr. Lydic has went home to glory. And uh, certainly, if his son, I don't see him here, and I found out later it was a foster son. Knowing his daddy was dying unsaved, run up home to get me, before he, and his daddy got saved before he died. So the greatest thing that boy ever done was coming to get someone to pray for his daddy before going. And um, the Neville trio came down and sang real lovely for them, and so Brother Neville asked me if I'd speak this morning and this evening also. So, um, you know, as the scripture says, ask abundantly that you don't. <laughs> So Brother Neville certainly is scriptural on those things, <laughs> very much. And um, so uh, I'll do my best. Now that I said this morning, Ben, it's Mother's Day, and we want to speak to the to the little children. I thought this morning would be a good time for 
for little children. Now, I think that the day of mother, uh, there's nothing any sweeter on earth that we know of than a real, genuine mother. God bless her gallant soul, a real, real mother. But we got so many substitutes today that is called mother that's not mother. They're just women who have children, but not mothers. An old-fashioned mother is one who cares for her family and don't lay out to these lounges and dances and all night long smoking, drinking to come in. She don't deserve that sacred name of mother. She's just a woman, that's all. That's raising a child, but not a uh, mother. Because mother has got a different meaning to it. Now, I, uh, I think if you know, now to Mother's Day, I won't express myself real good. I got an old gray headed mother sitting there myself. And I think a day, all right, but every day should be a Mother's Day. It's not once a year. And the reason these Mother's Day things are going on now, now see, we just got a handful and we all know one another, we're home folks. And that's the reason we're going to talk this way. I think that a mother should be respected every day the same. That's right. A real Amen. mother. Amen. And, uh, but this day they call Mother's Day is nothing in the world but a big commercial nonsense. Just to drain people for money. And it's a disgrace to mother, a Mother's Day. For once a year, well, we don't go to see her, but we'll send her a little bunch of flowers and that'll settle it. That's not mother. My goodness. A real mother is a woman that you uh, want that raised you and you love her and you see her and talk to her all the time, express your love to her all the time, not just one day in the year. But just before I start on my little drama, i just like to express this and renew some of you. Many of you have died off. Many of them have gone since this was made. It's 1933. Uh, did you see in the paper a few nights ago where that woman killed that man, throwed him out into her driveway and just back back and forth across him with her car so she just mashed him all up on the road and they said uh, 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 the attorneys and so forth said doesn't uh, that condemn your conscience he said god and i are getting tired the way women are treated <laughs> yeah she's an idol <laughs> trying getting tired how low can this nation stoop how far can we go without divine judgment i wonder uh, 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 god and i if God was guilty of all the nonsense was laid on to him, <laughs> he wouldn't be God, that's all. God, my, God has nothing to do with such as that. wonder when she's younger and torment how he'll think about it then. Oh, America, now you remember, if you haven't got this row down, put it down. This is my prediction, see. In 1933, when we were having uh, services down here, where um, the old, uh, I believe the Church of, of Christ is there now. It used to be the old, Amer uh, uh, it's right over here, Brother Neville, right straight down. Charlie Kern used to live there. What's the, Orphan's Home, uh, over here on um, Mags Avenue. In 1933, I just got a 1933 Ford, and I dedicated that morning to the Lord. And uh, before leaving home, I saw a vision. I've got it rolled, old yellow paper, still waiting in the Bible. I saw the end time coming. And you, how many can remember what a 33 car looked like back there? Or it's kind of run out like this and way up the back and chop down for the spare car to hang on. I saw a vision that before the coming of the Lord, that cars would look like an egg. How many remembers that prediction? Is there anybody left in here? Brother Stewart gone. And I guess it's 19 and 33 when we were having services over here. I guess this is about all of them gone now since then. And um, I predicted that America, their number one God would be women. That's what it is. Everything's fashioned after Hollywood. I have things on record from the FBI files that would shock you to pieces. Just to tell you, right where, and the scandal on these movie stars, there isn't one of them hardly but what prostitutes. And the FBI exposed it just recently. I have it from their own file. And um, so um, all of them living out, even these movie stars, where he proved they went in and picked them up living with man, $25 and $50 a night. A man, all of them down in Hollywood and everywhere. Had private homes and man back in there where they would send them out to these people. And that's what we look to television and 
and out here on these screens and things and let our children call that an idol and then call that mother. That's a long way from being mother. That's filth. Exactly. And yet they set the pace of the day. Well, let them, the kind of clothes they wear, watch the American women dress right up just like them and everything. Sure. And America's God is a woman, not Jehovah. They turned away from that, not to mother now. Now, lay that aside. That's the sacred thing we're going to talk about. But I mean woman. And remember, I predict that before the great total annihilation, which I don't say the Lord told me this, but I believe there'll be something happen either between now or at that time and 77. It may come to this hour. But between now and 77, I predict that either a great destruction or a total annihilation of the entire earth between now and 77. I predicted it in 19 and 33. I predicted that women would keep demoralizing and the nation would keep falling. And they keep hanging to mother, or black mother, like that, so they become a woman, become an idol. And after a while, that America would be ruled by a woman. Mark it and see if it's not right. A woman will take the place of a president or something of great, some high power in America. When, I say this with respect, ladies, when a woman gets out of the kitchen, she's out of her place. Right. That's where she belongs. Outside of that, she has no place. And <clears throat> now, I'm not hard on, but I just tell what's the truth and what's the Bible. It used to be the man was the head of the house, but that was in Bible days. <laughs> he isn't no more. He's the puppet, sorry, the, or the babysitter or something. And now, no, the one that takes care of the dog, practice birth control and pack a little old dog around in their arms all the time so you can run around all night. I'm, I'm not talking about mother. God bless them. That's what holds the nation together now. Halfway is a real good, sacred, God-saved mother. That's right. But the shame of how degraded that our woman is. I got a piece out of the paper. I cut out this last world war, number two, that said, where has the morals of the American women gone? That after six months overseas, four out of five soldiers was divorced from their wives and they had married some other man and couldn't even wait for them to come back from overseas. Soldiers over there dying on the battlefield. That person that does that is not worthy to be called mother. That sacred name. No, it isn't. So, I've always been called woman hater, but I'm not. I think a woman's a wonderful thing, and a mother especially. But they should be their places, and not take the place of man, and not take the place of God. And this morning I heard a hole in this church saying that a mother's rules the stars of heaven and all this. I can imagine Catholics doing that on Virgin Mary and so forth like that, which worship in them dead women, St. Cecilia and all like that, which is the highest form of spiritualism. That's all it is. Anything intercedes with the dead is a spiritualism. So there's only one intercessor between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. That's right. No other saint, no nothing outside of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who is the intercessor between God and man. But when I see the churches, even as getting behind the pulpit, all the sacredness taken from Christ and given on mother, all the sacredness taken and then they start and there you are. So, but there is a real mother left. Praise God. Just like when you see a hypocrite, there's a real Christian that really lives alive. Where you have a pro, you have a con. That's exactly right. And now that kind of a mother and that kind of a child we wish to talk about now in the Bible. Now, I wonder how many little boys and girls we got here this morning. If you heard Brother Neville's broadcast yesterday, how many little boys and girls would like to come up here and sit on the front seat while I talk to you? Would you like to come up here? There's one, two, three, four, five seats here, one here, six, and some little seats along here. Would you like to come up front? Some of you little fellows can go without your mama and would like to come up here? You're more than welcome. My mother's coming. Or they're in the Sunday school room. Well, that's fine. We'll wait to, a few minutes and be talking. They'll be out in a few minutes and we'll just gather them little old black and brown and blue eyes up here and, and talk to each one of them. Now, how many love the Lord? Say, Amen. Amen. Now, I want to speak to the mothers and the children, and it's just, uh, directed to them. Tonight, if the Lord willing, I want to speak on the first miracle Jesus performed, and how it was done, and with what power, and what did he do? When he done his, how many knows what the first miracle he did? 
speak it all together. Turn water into wine. That's right. The first miracle he done. Now, if the Lord's willing, while I was studying this morning, it just come up on my mind. I see we got our good friend, Mr. and Ms. Ginter, back there, I believe, this morning. I just happened to notice him as I turned around the post this way. The other day I was taking an examination. I have to keep myself up for examinations about overseas duty. And when I come out, who did I make but Mr. and Mrs. Ginter sitting out there in the office, uh, Dr. Sheen in Louisville, a very fine Christian brother. I tell you, I really met a real man there, a real one who believes in God and puts his trust in You know what? I'll tell you, I find more doctors believing in divine healing than I do preachers. That's right. You talk to him, but certainly. And when, he, when I went to leave, he took my hand. He said, Brother Bram, you do more for humanity than I ever could do. He said, that's right. He said, uh, you can help people that I couldn't even touch. He <laughs> said, so that's right. I said, well, of course, you can store up or set a bone or something like that, but God does the healing. He said, that's correct. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I like to see wide-minded sensible thinking people. I think of surgery and of medical uh, doctors and of chiropractic, osteopathic, divine healing, and all together, if any of that can help anybody, I'm for it. And when you take a doctor, condemn a preacher, the preacher condemn a doctor, and an osteopath condemn a surgeon, the surgeon condemn a medical doctor, you can imagine this. There's some selfish motive somewhere. That's right. Because each one of them has proved that they helped somebody. That's exactly right. Now, the thing of it is, I think if our motives is right and our hearts are right for the people, we ought to all work together to help our fellow man to make it easier life. And then your motives is unselfish. Give him praise to God who gives Amen. all things free. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, we should not have any selfishness nowhere. It should be perfect. If the chiropractic can help this, and the osteopathic can help this, and the surgery help this, and something else help that, let's pray for all of it. Amen. Amen. That God will just help his dear people to be well and happy. Because we ain't got very long to stay here. Amen. Just a few days, and we're on the road, gone somewhere else. So what we're trying to do is make life just a little easier so you can uh, have a better time while you're here. Amen. Amen. Now, upon this thought, let's bow our heads before we open the Bible and speak to our lovely Savior. Amen. Our kind Heavenly Father, we come so humbly this morning in thy presence and thank thee above everything that ever was on the earth or ever will be for the Lord Jesus Christ. For he was the one who brought man and God together and reconciled us poor, unworthy, ungodly aliens away from God by, uh, by choice of ourselves. We took our own choice and walked away from him. And he was so good to come. And while we were unpleasing to God, while we were sinners away from God, he reconciled us back to the Father through the shedding of his own blood. How we thank thee for him. And today stands as a mediator, the only one between God and man who can make a prayer come in the presence of God through the platform of his own blood that he shed from earth to glory. Come in this earth for the way of a barn, born out in a manger, went out of the earth through capital punishment. The earth didn't mourn him. Heaven couldn't receive him because he was a sinner. He had our sins upon him. The earth didn't mourn him. They rejected him away from such a person. He had even not even a place to be born or a place to die. And he hung between the heavens and earth. Heaven couldn't receive him, and earth wouldn't have him. And he died anyhow to save us from sin, to heal our sickness, to give us joy and a lovely stay while we were here on earth. What a Savior! Oh, how we thank you for him. Oh, God, let our every adoration of our heart be poured to him and him alone. May every respect and every worship Everything that comes from our lips or hearts, may it be laid on him who is worthy of all. He who sat upon the throne one day with the book in his hand. No man in heaven or earth was worthy or able to even look on the book or to loose the seals that had it sealed up. And this lamb that was slain the foundation of the earth come, took it from his hand, opened the seals and loosened up the, the words to the people. 
And Father, we pray today that his Holy Spirit will loose our hearts from all of its darkness, loose our tongues from all of its vile, forgive all of our sins and take away all the darkness and move into our hearts this morning, and especially these little children. God bless them as they sit here this morning with their lovely mothers. God, how we thank thee for motherhood for real women in the midst of all this darkness and idolatry and filth and corruption of the world, yet we got real genuine mothers. How we thank thee for them. Young and old, both alike, we thank thee, Father, for real motherhood. And we pray, God, that you'll bless them. Seeing sitting here this morning, many of our brothers and sisters wearing white roses or white carnations and flowers, meaning that their dear sainted mother has crossed beyond the veil on the other side, not dead, but alive forevermore. Someday they'll come to down to the river, and there they'll get to see her again on the other side. Many are wearing red roses. Mother's still here. We thank thee for that. Pray that you'll bless us together as we study thy word, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now the Lord bless you. And we are <clears throat> start right in on the word this morning. Now first, before this little drama, I thought for the mothers and the little kiddies, and they probably hear me because this thing's got quite a voice. And <clears throat> I'm going to give a little drama because I've been noticing out in my services, sometimes dramas help out a whole lot. Don't you think so? The little fellows understand it better. I'm looking at a couple of bright-eyed boys sitting looking at me now, which will be a man of tomorrow if there is a tomorrow. And now before we have any drama or anything else that's gone on in church, it must have the Bible background. Amen. It must be the Bible background. First, let us all turn over to Matthew, the 16th chapter, and the 25th verse, and we'll read these verses. First, while we're reading, getting ready, maybe by that time, the little fellows will be out. Now, Matthew 16, 25, we read this, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall Find it. Now, this is a very important scripture. Let's all read that together. What do you say? Everybody, little children, all together now. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You know, boys and girls and I know the older ones will enjoy this the same as the children will, but that scripture is so important, and some scriptures are so important that God puts it in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but this is so important until he put it six times in the Gospels. Six times this came from his own lips, Jesus. Now, over in Mark, we'll turn over there unto the 8th chapter of Mark and begin with the 34th verse. And I'll read some there. And I want you to notice here, again, with just a little continuation of this, where Jesus spoke it. And remember, he put it six times in the gospel. So it would be sure, two is a witness, but he put it three times that, see? So it would be sure that you remember it. And we, when he had so called the people and unto him and his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, one of the translators put, take up his cross and follow me daily. Now, now the 35th verse, listen. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what 
shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, let's take this 35th verse and quote it together now. All right. Now, let's say it together. Um, we're going to take Mark 8, 16. Now, let's say it together. Mark 8, 16. Beg your pardon. Mark 8, 16, 35. No, I've got it wrong yet. Mark 8, excuse me. Mark, St. Mark, 8, chapter, 35th verse. Now, let's try it. St. Mark, 8, chapter, 35th verse. Now, we got it. Let's read it. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall save it. That marvel? Now, we'll get right on with our little story, and as the kiddies come, they'll take their places. The ushers watch them as they quietly see if you can get them in here as we take and give our story. We're going to base this this morning on a drama. And I, a lot of times, here a few days ago, our brother and sister Woods was with me, I believe, up there at uh, the last meeting. Now, I speak as a Christian businessman's breakfast, and I gave a little drama of Zacchaeus in the, up in the sycamore tree. And when Jesus came by and how he got a garbage can, you know, and dramatized it, and got up in a tree to see Jesus, a businessman setting up in the tree, you know, hiding from Jesus, and Jesus didn't know where he was at, as if, you know. And then he said, oh, they tell me that man knows things and can foretell things and knows where the fish had to come. I don't believe it. And Jesus walked around the tree and said, Oh, you can't see me. I'm sitting on the tree. And Jesus stopped and looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. <laughs> he only know where he's up there, but he knows who he was. So I think a little drama sometimes helps the old people, the old boys and girls, the same as the young. So now, you might ask me after this is over, Brother Bram, where do you get this information of these characters and names? Some of them I've been helped by my good friend, Brother Bruce Cliburn, and another by Josephus, the great historian, and then books upon history that I have read of this event and so forth, and that's how I get my information from what we're going to give in drama this morning, or this, um, I see our little ones are coming out now, and for this um, a story this morning that we're going to give. Now, you little boys and girls, if you can, as many as want to, come right up here in front. We've got five or six empty seats. If you'd like to come right up here, we'd be glad to have you. You're just coming in in time for the little drama of here. And now, that's how I come to get this information, how I come to find it. Someone might pick around and say, well, I never read that part in the Bible. But if you didn't, history picked it up, you see. So it's all the same story. Only it's just given them um, uh, a little a drama form. And so, that's it, that's it. Is that your little brother? Oh, he sure looks like him. He's a fine boy. You can just tell he is. All right. Now, you want to come up here and sit down here? There's two little girlies, uh, three little girlies. My, that's just fine and dandy. Now, uh, this little story this morning is for little girls and boys. Mrs. Collins, I believe that's you there, and the other little sister. You want to go right over there, honey, and sit down? Yeah, I believe there's a place right here if the lady would, would move her pocketbook. And, and maybe right over here, a couple seats over here. I want all these little boys and girls up here in front so I can talk to them. Here, here we got some chairs here. We just need you to get some chairs. Yes, sir. Some of them will help us right here so we won't just be dust to these little boys and girls. <clears throat> oh, my. Isn't that fine? Now, that's, I believe you'll have to have a few more, Brother Neville. I see a couple more coming down. And <clears throat> now, that's just fine. How many mothers is here? Raise your hand. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, that's just fine and dandy. Now, if you little girls in the back want to come up here, come right ahead. If you're old enough to be away from Mommy and Mommy wants to bring you up here, well, tell her to come right on. It's for Mommy, too. <clears throat> All right. Now, I tell you, children, we just read a verse. Would you all like to quote it with me? Would you all like to quote this verse with me? 
Now, it's found in St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, and the 26th verse, what we're going to talk about. I use little, every little boy and girl this morning, quote this with me now. Say, St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 25th verse. Now, you quote with me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall save it. Shall save it. Now, let's say it again. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall save it. Wonderful. Now, boys and girls, you know what? There's a lot of things in the world that's real valuable. And one of those things is you have it with you today. It's the soul that's inside of that body. And that's the most valuable thing in the world to you. Is that right, Mother? Say amen. amen. The most valuable thing that you got is your soul. And now, if you keep your soul, then you're going to lose it. And if you lose your soul, then you're going to save it. If you lose your soul to Jesus, see? In other words, if you believe on Jesus, you become his disciple. And then, if you give your life to Jesus when you're young like this, and uh, then you're going to, he's going to save it to everlasting life. But if you, if you want to keep it, you're going to lose it. Yeah, you'll lose it. You want to act like these other girls and boys around here and go out and do as they do, then you're going, you're, you're going to lose it. But if you want to give your life to Jesus, then you're going to save it for eternity and forever. Now, um, you remember that now, that it's the most valuable thing in all the world is your little soul. And if you keep it, you lose it. If you give it to Jesus, you save it. Can you say that with me? If, say, if I keep it, I'll lose it. And if I give it to Jesus, I'll save it. That's it. Now you got it. Isn't that? All mothers think that was fine. Say amen. amen. Oh, that's fine. That's good. Now you see, there's one thing you can do. Now you go ahead. If they want to act like it and the other world wants, if the boys and girls wants to go out there and do things and tell stories and say things that's wrong and, and cheat and steal and, and do things bad and copy in school and things, go ahead. They lose it. They lose it. But if they'll give it to Jesus, they won't do that and then they'll save it. That's what you want to do, isn't it? Now, we're going to start in our little story. Now, that's our background. Now, you remember that. Now, let's start our little story now to the old people and to the, the fathers and mothers you listen to now, you, especially you mothers and dads. And we'll start. You like those stories, do you? Oh, I just love them, especially now. You read a lot of stories. It's not true. But this story is true. Absolutely the truth. Every word of it. It's in God's Bible. So it has to be the truth, see, because it's God's Word. God's word is the truth. Now, you know, said I'm so tired. I, I'm I'm tired enough to die. I said, why don't you go upstairs and go to bed? Lay down on the top, the sofa up there, and go to bed. He said, but oh, I'm too tired. He said, oh, honey, if you'd have seen what I saw today, oh, I'm I what. Well, I don't even want any supper. Oh, it's terrible, the sight that I saw today. She said, well, what was it that you saw? So I can't tell you before the children. Oh, it's too terrible. My, it was bad. Well, what was it that you saw? Well, I'm going upstairs and lie down just a little while, and then, and then after supper, when we put the kiddies all to bed, then uh, I'll tell you what happened today. All right, she said, and upstairs he went. He laid down, oh, so tired, oh, my. You know how daddy is when he gets tired, just really tired. And after a while, the little bright-eyed girl, she started running around over the floor and talking a little out to, shh, 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 You'll wake up daddy. And oh, he's so tired, so he, he wanted to die. He didn't want to live anymore. And if daddy gets that tired, well, we should let him sleep a little while. Don't wake him up. And little Miriam, she goes over and sits down to be real quiet. And after a while, she had supper already. So she slips up the stairs and she, um, she calls him Amram. And he said, uh, yes, 
uh, Jacobin, here, I'm coming down. So they come down the steps, you know, and they had a nice supper. So after they'd eaten supper, and the little, a little boy and little girl had eaten all their supper while they, mother put the things away and she tucked them into the bed. And then she goes into the room, her and her husband, and they sat down. Said, well now, what was it that you saw today, uh, Amran, that made you so, so upset tonight that you didn't even want to live? Oh, he said, darling, I, I just can't understand it. He said, I saw, it's, well, we see it every day, but today was especially. He said, oh, I, I see the awfulest sight I ever seen. He said, our poor boy, some of them not over 12 years old, pulling that big old wagon with ropes around their neck like that, and those poor kids that pulled till they could pull no more up that great big incline, those big stones back there, and they couldn't go no farther, and after a while the wagon began to creak and go real slow, and after a while it stopped. Hell no, come on, man! Oh, he was a maniac, he roared out, what are you stopping this wagon? Wham! With those great big old snake whips, and whipping them across the back, and the blood run out of their back and run down like that, and those poor kids just hung onto this rope and cried, said, oh, chalk of it. What can we do, mothers? That we're the people of God. God blessed us. We're the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And why would we have to be slaves down here to these things? Oh, it's terrible how those poor boys cried. Oh, and I pray and I pray and I pray, Jacobin, and it seems like God just don't even hear me. I pray and I pray, and he seems like he turns a deaf ear. He don't hear me at all. He seems like he don't care anymore. Now she said, look, Amram, that don't sound like you. You're a real daddy. And you, that don't sound like you because you're always encouraging us, telling us to have faith in God. Oh, but dear, when I pray so much, and still God don't hear me. It seems like it just gets worse all the time. The more I pray, the worse it gets. But little boys and girls, does God hear prayer? Does he hear his prayer? Does God answer prayer? Yes. Does he answer real quick? Not all the time, does he? No. Sometimes he makes us wait. Is that right? But God answers prayer, does he? And it's because everything's going wrong. That's no sign we should quit praying. We just pray on anyhow, don't we? That's right. Now you answered right. God answers prayer. Let's all say it together. God answers prayer. Yes, no matter what the circumstances are, he answers anyhow. All right. Well, are you going up to pray again? Yes. And Daddy had a secret room way up in the attic where he went to pray. So he gets up there that night. He kneels down by the side. He said, now he says, Jacobin, now you go on and go to bed. And you and the kiddies, because don't bother me, I'm going to pray maybe all night tonight. So he gets down on his knees and he prays and he prays. I see him lift up his hands and say, Oh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, remember your promise to your people. Here we are way down here in Egypt and we're under bondage and oh, our cruel taskmasters are, are driving us to do things and to beat us around and our poor people are are stripped off naked and their witness was whipped and we're your people. Oh God, surely you'll hear prayer. Surely you'll answer prayer. And I pray and I pray and I pray and you seem like you don't even answer me. But God, I believe that you are God and you'll finally answer prayer. And he prayed on like that almost all night. And the next morning about three or four o'clock, he comes down the little steps and looks over there and there was his lovely little wife Little jockey bed, she was there in the bed asleep, and little Aaron and little uh, Miriam had already been tucked in the bed, so they were just as sleepy as they could be and sleeping away. All right, he says to her, she said, it's getting late, and you're just getting, yeah, I prayed all night. His eyes were stained with tears because he cried for the people, and she said, look, I am, I am, you shouldn't go too hard at it. Now, he said, listen, dear, that's good. But now, look, you've got two kitties to raise here, and the burden is mine. If somebody don't pray for our poor people, what will become of them? Amen. What's going to happen if somebody don't have the people at, at heart? 
Somebody's got to pray. Well, she says, Amram, the burden's not all yours. Well, it seems to be, and anyhow, I'll pray anyhow, all the time. Goes to work that day, and each day he comes and goes in the same old toil. And he, he had a hard job. He had to, they poured mortar into a great big mold, and he had to stand there for that big furnace. When it opened up, ooh, my, it almost break his hide. That horrible heat. He'd push those bricks back in there and bake them, bring them out to build great big roads and great big high towers to idle gods and everything. And this real Christian man down there working like that for the enemy. But he was a slave. He was in bondage. He had to do it. Every night when he'd come home, he'd pray and go up the steps again and pray and pray and pray and come back down. Got no better. Kept getting worse. And one day, over at the work, he heard a rumor. He said, what's that? What is that? Tell me. Somebody whispered to another. After a while before the day was gone, it was all over the whole country. What was going to happen? What was it? A council was going to meet that night. Old King Pharaoh, the old wicked king, was going to call all these people together and have another big council. So they had this great council meeting down there. So that night he went in. Oh, he was just all down. He goes in and his wife says, Amram, dear, she met him at the door and kissed him and said, I had your supper real good and warm. But said, dear, you look so pale. What's the matter? Said, oh, Jacob, if you'd only knew what's going on. Oh, it's worse than ever. What? Shh. Can't tell it. The children's around. Wait till after supper and I'll tell you about it. Okay. So she had supper ready, got supper, uh, and took all the kitties and put them in bed. So they went in. He said, Jockey Cat, I want to tell you something. Said one of the most horrible things is a happening. What? Said they're going to have another council today. Now tonight. And when they do, they're going to set some other burden upon us people. So then let's go over to the king's palace. King Pharaoh brings them all out there and says, All right! All you gentlemen! What's the matter with you around here? I'll give my orders around here. This people is increasing all the time. What's the matter? Can't we stop this? That someday there'll come another army in here and all these enemies of ours out of Goshen over there, these Israelites, will join themselves with this army. And they'll overcome us, and our great economy will be torn down. Our great kingdom will be destroyed. They'll take us. What's the matter with you? Speak up, somebody. Don't you know something to say? Oh, he was mean. He was very mean. All the generals shaking, one of them raised up and said, Long live King Pharaoh. Well, say what you're going to. He said, Long live the king, your highness, sir. He said, I would desire that you'd put more burdens upon the people. You know, Scott, you already put plenty of burdens on the people. And yet they increase. Why, yours, that's all the ideas you've got, just keep it to yourself. Oh, he was rough. After a while, one raised up a great big smile on his face like the devil. And he said, long live King Pharaoh. He said, I've got the idea. They will speak up. Don't stand there like that. He said, I'll tell you what we can do. He said, you know, these people are increasing so fast. Yes, that's right. Said, some, of their, some of their people even have as many as 14 children. Sometimes they have 20 children. And our people don't have maybe one. He said, they're increasing so fast, they're just covering the whole land. See, God was doing something. See, God always pulls the wool over the devil's eyes. See, he knows what he's doing, see. And all these women just having lots of children. Why, well, he said, long live the king. But I'll tell you what. Every time a woman gives birth to a little boy, baby, go out in the land here and get some women that's not mothers. You see, women that never had children. Women that don't want children. That don't love children. Oh, long nose witches. See? Longer the nose, the better. Oh, long fingers, painted up faces, and get them. They don't know what a mother's love is. So then when a little boy baby is being born, well, let them go and get that little boy's baby and bring him out and bust his head against the wall. Throw it back in the house to the mother like that. Throw him down in a big well. 
Oh, better than that? Taking out pies, hands, and feet, throwing out in and back up the crocodile. That's the way to get rid of it. And they won't increase very much because there'll be no man left killing all the little boy babies. Oh, Pharaoh says, that's good. That's a good idea. See what the devil is? He's wicked, isn't he? Said, said, that's the thing to do. Go get, you done. Now, being that you had the idea, I'll just make you overseer of that. You go out and get all the old women that you know of that it's uh, never been mothers and they don't love children and they're, they, see, it takes a mother to love a child. You remember how mother loved you? When I see mother loved the little baby, but she had to get somebody that, that they didn't, they didn't have no children, didn't want no children, just, just, just real old mean women. And said, make them police. And when you make them police, give them orders that they can go in any house they want to and take every little baby out and bust its head against the wall and give it to the crocodile to eat. Every little baby. Ooh, how cruel. And then you know what they did? All right, that's good. Then the next day, when Amram was down there working, he heard that issue had been made. And, oh, he goes home. Oh, he said, oh, John. Oh, darling, let me tell you something. You know how that order was issued? To kill all the little boy babies. And he told us that, oh, I just can't stand it. Up there he went again to pray. That night he prayed like he never before. Are we supposed to keep on praying? Oh, pray on. Is that right? Just keep on praying. No matter what goes on, keep on praying. Now, and the first thing you know, he prayed all night. Oh, God, be merciful. Help God, we pray that you will help us in some way. That down he come around daylight, day after day, and oh, what a howl around the country. Every day you'd hear mothers screaming up and down the streets to take their little babies out of their arms, their little cunning little boy babies, those old witches would go in there and take their little feet and bang them up against the wall and kill them and throw them into the crocodiles. The poor mother would get on her knees and she'd cry, oh, don't take my baby, don't take my baby. And oh, what a time they were having. You know how mother loves little babies? How she puts them on the chin? Remember how mother would take you and, and wash you and kiss you and, and, and would say how pretty you was and how she puts you to bed at night? And oh, if, if you had a, a little door would be open, a little draft coming through, something like that. Oh, my, she'd run real quick and shut the door, cover up the little baby. And you know what she'd take? She loved you, see? She loved you. Oh, she loved that poor little thing that God had given her that was helpless and it couldn't help itself. So she loved that little baby. And she'd just kiss her little babies and play with them because she was a real mother. But these old women that killed the babies, they didn't know what motherly love was. They wasn't mothers. All they thought about this had big time on their mind. Things of the world. So they'd go and kill those little babies. You're too young to know, but it's still going on. That's right. Now you adults know what I'm talking about. Right. Too much of it. Oh, you say, I wouldn't take, but abortion case is the same thing. All right. But you see, they don't know what mother love is. Now you know what I mean when I say real mothers. Right. No different than the same devil. So there, it's just to think of the thousands times, thousands times, thousands yearly. As bad as it was in Egypt or worse. And there, then they come in, they didn't have a mother's love. So they'd take those little babies and kill them. Oh, it kept going worse and worse. And one day, there come another rumor. They're going to have another meeting. Pharaoh called all his counselors together. And all of them together, they got in there and said, All right, they're still increasing. What do we do about it now? This same old sly, sick devil, faced guy, raised up and said, Long live King Pharaoh. I have the idea. Look, you've got the man working. You make him have a till of bricks so many each day. Make him make them out of stubble. You kill the, the little children and things. But they're still increasing. The thing you ought to do is put the women to work, too. If you put the women to work, then they won't. Now, that's not a woman's place. So he said, but you put the women to work and put them out there and let them make brick too. And then they'll be so tired when they come in, they, they can't cook their husband's supper, they can't be a good mama, see? 
And so if they're going to work and go on like that, so they, they won't be able to do it. So you put them to work too. That's good. Fine. You're a wise man. So he puts all the women to work. And here comes poor old Amram coming that night. So, oh, the occupant. I don't know what we're going to do now. They're putting all the women to work. I, I tell you, oh, I just don't know what to do. We're, we're, we're just, we're slaves and we're getting worse and worse. I, I predict this. If God ever does anything for us, it'll be as we're all dead. Now, God don't wait like that, does he? No. God just watches us sometimes, doesn't he? All right. So then that night he said, I'm going up and pray like I never prayed before. Now, that's the way to pray, isn't it? Pray like you never prayed before. Really get the business. See, if you just go up and say, Lord, bless so and so and so, God don't, don't take interest much to that. But when you really get out of business, when you little boys and girls pray, get out of business. Do you do that in school? Do you, help, you ask God to help you in school? When, when you're going to go to school and you don't make very good grades, you go in and say, God, uh, uh, I, I want you to help me. Do you pray? How many little boys and girls pray? Let's see your hands. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's good. Do you have a secret place where you go pray where mommy and daddy don't even see you? Do you pray like that? You, you all pray like that? Have a little place, step out and pray and say your little prayer. You say it every night before you go to bed? When you get up at morning, they, oh, that's good. How many other little boys and girls? Raise up your hand and pray way over the building. Oh, ain't that fine? Well, now, that's good. That shows you got real mother and daddy that teaches you to do these things. Now, now when really you get in need, you better pray sincerely, haven't you? So, little Amram, upstairs he goes. Oh, my. He didn't want no supper. He said, it's too bad. I, oh, she said, you must eat supper, Dad. Just can't do it. A job of it. I just can't do it. I, I, I all said, but you're losing weight, and you're nervous, and you're pale in your face, you're vomiting up your food and things. Oh, I don't know what to do. But he said, dear, if somebody don't take the people to heart, if somebody don't pray for the people, what will we do? We're getting worse. Surely sometime God will hear. Yes, that's right. That's right. God will hear you get out of business and just stay there. Oh, this time he goes upstairs different. When he goes upstairs this time, he kneels down, he puts his hands up in the air. Oh, God, I'm speaking to you now. Amen. Get in the business. God, thou has ears and you can hear. Thou has eyes and you can see. Thou has a memory. You know your word. You know your promise. I plead to you, God, look down here to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That your people are in distress and they're dying. Do something for us, God. We've got to have you at once. We just got to have you. Or we'll perish. We must have you. We just got to if we live. That's when you're really praying. Oh, he prayed. You know, sometimes people when they pray, they get tired. Don't they, mother and dad? Yeah. Ooh, get so tired. Brother Graham sometimes gets so tired I almost faint. When I go to pray a long time, just get faint, go without eating and things for days and pray and pray and pray and preach. And I just get to a place I'm going to faint near. And sometimes people get that way. But that's no time to give up. Keep on. God will answer. Yes, sir. Keep holding on. Yes, sir. So he goes up a little creepy step. And I see Jehoshaphat come by and say, oh, Amram, I'm go, honey, I've eaten. I'm Jehoshaphat. Look. You're a fine, lovely little... She was beautiful, pretty little mother. And he kissed her on the cheek, you know, and patted her like that. So now, mother, you go back and put Aaron and, um, and uh, little Miriam to bed, and I'm going up to pray, and I, if you hear me weeping, don't you come up. Well, but Amram, what you going to do, honey? You, you're about dead. Yes, but I, I got the burden of the people on my heart. I got to do something about it. I got to stay on my knees. And so all the people, he said, today, only today, down to Brick Hill, I was down there, kept saying, well, surely God will hear. And one big old man come up, put his hands on his hip and said, when will he hear? When will he hear? See, our people's even getting bitter. They're giving against God because they pray and pray and pray and nothing happens. And this and praise and praise and praise and nothing happens. And all the priest says, the days of miracles is past. The only thing we can do is just jump right down to these old taskmasters who worship heathens uh, he's in gods and so forth. And what can we do? But he said, but I believe in Jehovah. Amen. I believe he's 
still answers prayer. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? Amen. All of you believe that? Amen. Amen. Still answers prayer. All right. Little old frail body lost right away up the creaky steps he goes. Goes over there and kneels down and said, Oh, Jehovah. Oh, he prayed like he never prayed before. He said, Jehovah, look at here. You're a real God. We believe that you got ears. We believe you got eyes. And you know all things. And we believe you're the God of the Hebrews. And we're the people of the promise. We believe you keep your word. So look at these heathens out here. How they're taking our cheap labor and building great big roads and idols and everything. You, Jehovah, would you sit in heaven and let the heathens rule over you? I don't believe you'll do it. Amen. I still don't believe you'll do it. Amen. When the devil comes in, God's still God. Amen. Right. Amen. Not permit these devils to do that. Hallelujah. I believe it's a day that when fashion and nonsense Amen. and all this time is going on, Amen. still on God and still on God. Right. Amen. But we need somebody like Amram. Got the burden on their heart. Who will stand and pray to until the heavens are split open on earth. God comes down and answers prayer. Oh. Hey. Amen. Now. Look at here, he said. God, do you let the heathens mock at your people like this? Weeks and months and years have passed. We pray constantly the tears bade off. Oh, God, will you permit such a thing? I wonder the day that when hundreds of little babies are sold into the rivers and cesspools and not permitted to live in bars and cases and everything else committed. Oh, it's a hold up. Will you permit that stuff to go on? The day when whiskey and beer and nightlife and everything is crowded out. And even the pulpit has got so weak to they're afraid to say anything about it. So hold up. Will you permit that nonsense to go on? He'll answer one day. Oh, his wrath is terrible when he comes. Yes, sir. Women going out and making their babies eye a cigarette tray to drop ashes in and, everything, and people take their little babies out to beer parlors, little girls and boys sitting up six or eight years old drinking and things like that, and the nation legalizing it, it's all right. Oh, my. Oh, my. Thank you, Holy, we don't see that. Well, they're even making fun of the people who really are right with God. All these things going on, making fun, hold on, just keep holding on. Jehovah will answer, don't worry. All right, we go on a little farther. We find him up there praying, and he just gets so tired, he lays down. He just prays till he just falls on the floor. He can't go any farther. And he took a little nap. He woke up. What's the matter? Look around here. Where's that light coming from? Oh. Look, standing there in the corner. There stood an angel. The sword hanging out of his side. Oh, he looked again. He rubbed his eyes. He pulled up on his knees. He said, Lord, oh, uh, oh, what, what would you want of me? He said, Amram, I am the angel of God. I've been sent from heaven. To tell you, God heard your prayers. Now I've come to tell you that He's going to send a deliverer. He remembers all of His promises. I see the angel now. Look at him. He's pulling out this sword. He points it to the north. Pam Ram looks. He said, Just the point of this sword lays the promise land. And I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your fathers, that you people would inherit that land. And I've heard the groaning of the people. I've heard the crying of the children. And I've come down. And I want you to know that you're going to play a great part in this, Amram, because you were faithful in prayer. You were faithful in your house. And about this time next year, Jehoshaphat, your lovely little wife, is going to embrace a little baby boy. And that little baby boy is going to be a deliverer. Boy! He said, oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. 
Oh, he's so beautiful. He looked, and the angel began to lift up. Just seemed like the whole heavens opened up, and he went out of the room. He waited a little bit. He said, Oh, I'm not beside myself. Downstairs he went real quick and said, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, that quick. said, Yes, what's the matter, dear? He said, Set up. And the moonlight shining in the window, was, she looked beautiful. And he said, I have just seen an angel of God. And he told me all these things. Oh, how did he look? Said the mother, how did he look? Said, oh, he was beautiful. He had on shining robe. His eyes sparkled. And he had a sword in his hand. He pointed to the north. That's the way, you know, the promised land lays from Egypt up that way, Palestine. He said, he pointed to the north. And he said that we were going to have a baby about this time next year. And this little baby is going to come forth and be a conqueror and go to deliver his people. Oh, hallelujah, Jehoshaphat. And he noticed she was white. Her face, her eyes were staring. Her great eyes were looking. Jehoshaphat, what's the matter? Oh, Amram, no, no, no. We have a boy, baby? Yes. Oh, you, it can't be. You know what? Oh, if you'd have never had this vision. You know what, Pharaoh? He's killing all the little babies. Yeah, but you know if God gives us this baby, God will take care of the baby. Amen. God promised God will take care of him. Well, the next day he goes out to work, and all the fellows up there, he knows Amran, instead of coming, he you knows being all stooped down and weary, had his shoulders up, said, Pass some more bricks. Come on, let's go. What's the matter? Glory to God. God's going to answer prayer. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. You know, it makes you feel good when you get an answer. Don't we know that, Papa and Mom? When God gives an answer. You don't have to see a vision. You have to know the answer there. That's all. That's all. Just know the answer there. Kind of see close now. Won't you listen to what happened? Now, you know, after a while, I said, all right, I am, ma'am. What's the matter with you? God's going to answer prayer. God's going to answer prayer. Well, how is he going to answer prayer? That don't make any difference. One old guy walked up and said, now, when do you think he'll ever answer prayer? I ain't going to tell you because you're an unbliever anyhow. Pass me some more bricks. Go over there like that and you open up. You don't care. You don't have to tell unbelievers all things, do you? Don't make any difference. No, sir. Certainly not. Pass me some more bricks. Hallelujah. Go to answer prayer. That's what you feel when you know it's going to happen, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, how is he going to do it? You don't know anyhow, so just keep on passing bricks. Put them all in there. Got all them old brick in there. That night he went home and said, Oh, Jehovah, think of it. We're going to have a baby. Oh, and he's going to be the deliverer. God's going to send him. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Oh, but I'm so worried. Oh, quit worrying. Quit worrying. Ah, God's only his. God's only hearing him now. God's got ears. God can hear him. God's got hands. He can deliver. So, oh, he had a lot of faith. You know, when you pray to you, you can get an answer. You yeah. really get a lot of faith. Then. Whoa. Did you ever pray for anything and you know God will go do it for you? Did you know girls do that in your book? Sure. That's when, you, that's when you know it's going to happen. All right. A whole year passes. And the first thing you know, here comes Amram in from work one day. What happened? The cutest little baby. Oh, he was a little darling, about this long. And so she picked him up, hands him over to Amram, and he kisses him. You know, he loves him, see? And mother was holding, oh, what a treasure. She said, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, you know, this little baby, he's such a sweet little thing. And you know what? The Bible said that the prettiest little baby ever was born. Now, I know mothers will disagree with me on that. <laughs> they thought, your mother thought she was the prettiest little baby, didn't she? Yeah. She has a right to think that, but the Bible said this was a pretty little baby. Oh, he was a jewel. God had his hands on him, you know. So, oh, he's the cutest little thing. He lay there and he, he just make a little bitty grin with no teeth. You ever know a little brother and do that? He was on little teeth. He just grin like that. And the first thing, you know, Wah! Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? What you doing? Sitting down, fast. You know what the order is? See, that old long-nosed witch that comes by here, they'll take our baby and kill it. That's right. We can't let it cry. So, oh, it needed some, needed some breakfast or supper. So the mother takes it over in a corner. She nurses it, you know. And so he's all right with him. So a couple of nights after that, they was playing with him. And whack, away he went again. He'll start crying. Wait, she went real quick and hit, hit him real quick like that. And downstairs, way down and back in the wall, um, our Amram had fixed a little place where he could hide the baby. And then first thing you know, they heard something up there go, <laughs> gone. Everybody's scattered over to one place. Said, that's Sam. That's them old witches. Them old long, fingered, painted fingernails. And the old witches look down there and 
Look out the window and say, yeah, that's them. They're standing there. Open up! Well, Amram Ram walked down over the door and said, what do you want? Said, you got a baby in here. And we know it. And we're going to take it. We ain't got no baby to give to you. They didn't. We're coming in and look anyhow. We're police women. See our badges? And that's other. Ain't that something for a woman to be? But we're police women. We got our rights from the authorities. You know, we have them here now. And so, so then they take down, goes in. They go in and turn over the sofa and open up all the drawers and throw everything out on the floor and take all the big holes and shake them out and go upstairs and find where Daddy had a little secret place. To, everywhere. But they couldn't find the baby. Couldn't find the baby. So they walked up to the woman there for poor Jehoshaphat standing there. Her face was white. They walked up to look at you. We know that you're a, a mother. We can tell by the looks of you. We know you're a nursing woman. And we know that baby's here. We'll be back. We'll get it. Out the door they went. Bam the door and out they went. She said, oh, oh, what can we do? What can we do? So our man said, pray. Is that the thing to do? Is that the thing? Pray. Let's pray. Oh, 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 I don't know what, what to do. Oh, so he said, now look, you quieten down. You go nurse the baby again. I'm going upstairs and pray. So he goes upstairs, he prays, he said, Jehovah, you got ears. Jehovah, you got eyes. Jehovah, you can hear. You can answer prayer. You gave us this baby. You gave us your promise. And you will keep your promise. And you will keep that baby. And I'm confident. After praying, getting real tired, he, he just stole like this one sleep. He was so tired. Worked all day and praying all night. He was tired. And then, you know what happened? He went to sleep, and he dreamed a dream. You know, God speaks in dreams too, doesn't he? Yeah. Sure he does. Yes, he does. He does. See? And he speaks in dreams. Oh, when he woke up, he said, That's it. I ought to have thought about that. That's what I ought to do. I just want to send it out. Downstairs he goes, he said, Jock of it. Yes, dear. Oh, I'm so weary. I can't sleep. Oh, go to sleep. Go to sleep. It's all over. How you know? Oh, I just know. I just have confidence. Instead of Dad that night going upstairs to pray, he went out in the basement. He was busy down there. I wonder what he was doing. Let's sit down and see. I see him down there going, slam, slam, slam. Take this reed and look over, twist it and see if it's good. Little Aaron went out that day, go to the whole arm, rolled up and laid him down in the basement, you know. God takes care of you. Mm-hmm. Old time religion is so kabu true. Turn around. She said, Amram, what's the matter? Hallelujah, you got there, go on. Mm-hmm. It's the old time religion. <laughs> it's the old time religion. <laughs> it's the old time religion. <laughs> Leave it all up. And it's good enough for me. Give me this old. He was doing something. You know, after a week or two passed, the first thing you know, they wonder what he was doing. So one night when he was all asleep, he slips upstairs and brings this little thing up, you know. He gets it up like this, and he brings it up. He raises up the cover where Jacobus, his wife, is sleeping. And he slips it under the cover, little Aaron, and, and little Miriam was asleep, you know. Oh, she was a sweet little thing, that little girl was. So was little Aaron. So he put down there. He says, Jocelyn, dear, she said, have you been in the basement praying this time of night, Amen? He said, no, I've been in the basement praising God. <laughs> so what you been doing? He said, I want to tell you. Now, you know, that old witch is coming back. Yeah. And I want to tell you what we're going to do. We've had the baby now for three months. And we've got to get rid of it. Oh, Amram, you got to do what? We got to get rid of the baby. Get rid of the baby? Yeah. Oh, you're cruel. No, I'm not cruel. No, no, no. I know what I'm doing. What do you mean? Why you did that? Is fatal. Go to get rid of our baby. Yeah. Go get rid of the baby. Oh, we can't. Now listen. If we keep it. We 
we're going to lose it. And if we give it to the one who gave it to us, he'll find it. Is that right? Now, if you keep it, we're going to lose it. how are you going to lose it? Well, then more witches is going to come by and get us. And look, if you keep that soul and go ahead and live like the world, you're going to lose it. The witches of hell is after you. Not trying. All this old folly of the world and things out there is right after you. If you keep it, you lose it. But if you give it back to the one who gave it to you, you'll find it. You keep it. What is it now? If we keep it, what do we do? Lose it. If we give it to Christ, we what? Keep it. Amen. That's good. Now you answer right. Now it says, Jehoshaphat, we're going to lose it if we keep it. So if we kind of turn it back to the one who gave it to us, then we'll keep it. Now you got a soul. And Papa and Mama, you the same. But if you keep it, you're going to lose it. That's right. The witches of hell will take it. They're all after it. But if you give it back to the one who gave it to you, Amen. you'll keep it Amen. to everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. Amen. 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 Excuse me, children. I'm as old-fashioned as a shot. <laughs> if you keep it, let's say it all together. If you keep it, you'll lose it. If you give it back, to the one who gave it to you, you'll keep it. Amen. Remember now, give it to him. How? That's why. Oh, she began weeping. She said, oh, what you going to do with it? She said, look here, I'm going to show you something. What you got under my bed? I said, let me show you. And he pulled it out. Oh, it's a little reed bag. It's a little ship, what it is. It hasn't got no rudder. It hasn't got no sail. It hasn't got no cannons on it. And yet, it's going to pack the most precious cargo that was ever packed by a ship to that time. Yeah. It hasn't got no captain or no crew. Right. I know there's a ship from that old like that, too. Oh, she said, Am, let me look at Am, Am, let me see. She goes over here and said, look here, I got a little lid on it. See, you picked the little lid up. She said, stinks. Mm. Ah. I said, yes, it stinks. Why? I poured it full of tar. <laughs> it's all pitched all over the pitch of tar, you know. So they put pitch all over. That's what he's boiling down here and pouring on top of these reeds. He pitched it. said, see, the water can't uh, get into it then, see. It's sealed all over. And said, and it, it just can't get into it. The water can't. I pitched it. The smell of that. You children know what tar is when you're fixing the street. You know, ooh, that awful smell. But it, 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 it keeps the, it, it shuts out all the cracks on the street. And that's what this does. It shuts out all the water. And that's what prayer does for the believer. That's what do, it keeps the world out of you. It's when you pitch yourself on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, and the blood comes down and seals you all up so the devil can get you. See? That's yeah. right. See? So then, oh, many times the people go around and say it's awful, but that don't make a difference. It keeps you safe. <laughs> That's the main thing. Keep safe. Say you're old fashioned, but that doesn't matter. It keeps you safe. Well, so what are we going to do? All right. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take the baby and we're going to have a little party. And we're going to take the baby and put him in here and put him out in an hour. Oh, no, 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 no. And ma'am, you can't put our baby out in the river. Yep. Yep. I know what I'm doing. See, he had a dream. You know what to do. See, God had instructed him. You know what to do? He built this, and he seen it was the very type of the ark that saved Mo, uh, Noah back there in his time. So he said, look here, I've got a little hole cut right in the top of it so he can breathe. See? He can get sunshine through there. And you know the ark in the old Bible way back there? It was made the same instant. And it had a hole right in the top of it so he could see in, you see? And the boy had to look up. So then this poor little baby named, let didn't even have any name, little nameless baby, and yet the cutest little baby in the world. The next night when they come in and they waited till about three o'clock in the morning and then they, he walks over and he got you praying. He goes over and he said, now come on, Jacobus, get up. And so they woke up little Aaron and little Miriam. Oh, she come over and she put her arms. She said, Daddy, little Miriam. She said, you're not going to take our little brother, baby, are you? And put it in the Nile where all those old crocodiles are. 
and he pushed her little hair back like that. She had pretty eyes and pretty little hair. And so he kissed her on the side of the cheek. He said, honey, it hurts me too. It hurts me too. But we must do this. You see, little girl, boy, sometimes we have these things that kind of hurts us, but we must do it anyhow. When a girl say, hey, did you ever smoke a cigarette? You say, no. Well, try one. Oh, I'm your buddy, you know. Yeah, I, you try one. But you, it might hurt a little bit to say, uh-uh, I don't want it. I don't want it. Say, will you come go to show with me this evening? No, no, uh-uh, I don't go to show. See, it might hurt this a little. See, oh, you're just an old fogey. Don't you believe that? It might hurt this a little bit. Just turn your head from it. It's the right thing to do, you see. Always do that. Do the right thing. All right. And now, when the girls are learning this little old toe dance and stuff like that, they want you to do it. You tell them, no, no, you don't do it. See, oh, well, it's a lot of fun. You don't care how much fun it is. You want to do what's right. So you always do what's right. Now, you just remember that now. You won't forget it, will you? Now, now what did they do? They tucked the little baby then, and he got up there, and little Aaron come up. He said, Daddy, what are you going to do with our baby? He said, Aaron, set up here on my lap, honey. Say, look, Aaron, if we keep the baby, what are we going to do? But if we give the baby back in the hands of him to give it to us, what will we do? We'll keep it. That's right. So now, how are you going to do it, Daddy? I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be done, but God's going to do it. See? And so then they put the little baby in there. And so we go, here they go now. They're going to the door. They go down to the door. He looks this way down the street. That way down the street, there's no word of the little body coming and says, Come on, Jonathan. Come on, Aaron. Come, come, come on, Mary. Let's go. They take a little art and go down to the flags of the river. It's, oh, it's a long time before daylight. And here comes little Aaron. Back there, a whole little Miriam, little brother, sister, they were crying. And poor little Jehoshaphat, she's going along. Shh, 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 shh. So watch in the street. Be careful. Be careful. Going on down the street. And little baby and the mother's packing the babies and daddy's packing the ark they get down to the river oh it's a great big river second biggest in the world now and so then great big river swift and it's full of great big old crocodiles and alligators oh they were fat they fed them all them little children they were just fat and and she says jehoshaphat says to amram her husband said, oh, what if the alligators get a hold of it? What if the crocodiles in here touch it? So don't worry. If they ever stick their nose in that tar, they'll get some away. See? That's the reason it stinks, see? He sticks his nose said he couldn't smell human flesh, so he'll get away. That tar will stink so bad until he'll run away. It'll be all right. Don't you worry. So they put it down on a little ark, and she said, now, uh, you nurse the baby. So the mother takes the baby and nurses it, and she nurses the baby until it gets its breakfast early in the morning, and then she... Kiss it, and so now Aaron, you can kiss it, and Aaron kisses it, and then they go over to Mary, and she kisses it, and Mother kisses it, and oh, she said, I just go, shh, 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 I wish we were about to be soldiers. See, we got to be soldiers. Now, y'all want to kiss it again? All of them kissed it around again. Then he put it in there, and Mother made a little blanket and put on it, a little pillow. She put it on there, she said, my darling little baby, God bless you. Shh, 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 I've got to take care of that, don't you? Close the little head down, and the first thing you know, Father begins to pull off his coat, take off his shirt. Here he goes wading out into the water. What do you think is going on in heaven about this time? Hallelujah. You know when things go on down here, there's something going on up there too. Amen. I can see God raised from his throne. Walk over. Say, Gabriel. Gabriel, why? Gabriel said, Hey, I'm Lord, come in. I'm going to show you something. So all your angels come around here, man. I'm going to show you something. I got people who believe me. <laughs> I got people who trust me. Come in, Lord. Good for all you angels. Take a look at this. Look, where's it at? Right down there. Hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it. Look right down there. See the ages and them, them, them bulrushes there, them flags? And yeah. See there's, what is it? There's a man with his hands up in the air, on his knees, calling on me. There's a crying mother and two little crying children. They're trusting me to the very end. Gabriel, you remember when he went in? You remember that man? Yes, I met in the room that night and talked to him. Uh huh. He still trusts me. I got people that believe me. I got people that will trust me to the end. 
See him look at him. Yes, so oh, is that gallon. The father's walking in the water. Starts to push the little boat out. I hear him say, Gabriel! Yes, Lord! Call 10,000 angels to the sea. Give them marching orders right away. Call the host of hell out. Sail all up and down along the banishers of heaven and pile all the way on the aisle. I command that no crocodile will touch that cargo. Nothing will touch it. Don't even let a chunk of wood come near it. Hallelujah. Gabriel said, it shall be done. <laughs> By sound of trumpet, 10,000 angels come in arms. The Father, where are you going to be, Lord? I'll be at the other end. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's always on the receiving end. I'll wait down at the other end. I got a purpose. When people will trust me, I have something of purpose. It'll be all right with them. All right. Goes down the other end. I see Moses or uh, little Aaron and them going back up the street, weeping. Watch it. And little Miriam, she's still standing watching. She says, "Oh, oh, said, come on, Miriam, it's getting daylight. Come on, roosters are crowing. Come on, it's getting daylight. Come on, honey, let's go." Said, "Oh, Daddy." Daddy, please, one more time, let me just stand. Just let me watch it. Let me see what happens. I'll be back home after a while. Oh, that's a good idea, Marin. Might be all right. You just stand and watch what takes place. All right, I'll watch it. Now, you hurry home after a while. You just see what takes place. You come bring us news what goes on. All right, Daddy. And away they went. Oh, no, I had to hurry. Little Miriam, she stands and she watches. First thing you know, it gets lodged. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. What is that coming up there? It's a, it's a chunk. Oh, is that an alligator? Oh, he turned. <laughs> what did he see? <laughs> he seen what a lot of people don't see. <laughs> that little car was going floating through there. They thought he didn't have any pilot. They thought he didn't have any captain. It did. They were gathered all around. Here comes a little crowd. I'll say, oh, looky there. Here it comes floating up like anyone. Oh, no, no, you can't come close to that cargo. In there stood the emancipator. That was the river. Three million Jews. All down the hill couldn't touch him. Floating down this little old tar made ark. On down the river. The first thing you know, he gets into a whirlpool. Oh, Miriam said, oh, oh, look at that, that whirlpool, look at that, look at it like that. The first thing you all want to do is smooth that, honey. That's the way it goes. We get in a whirlpool sometime in this little bar. Don't worry. There's somebody watching over the angels of God and can't about those who fear him. Got 10,000 of them on the marching list now. Little Miriam, she goes down, she climbs up over this big rock, and she scoots over like this, and she runs down, she watches the art, and goes on down through here and goes through this bunch of flags. Hey, while it gets stuck out there. So, oh, oh, I wonder. Now, her daddy told her, said, now, don't you let anybody see you watching that. If somebody comes up, just act like you're not even looking at it. Just go on some other way. Don't, don't act like that you're even watching it all. Just keep on going. All right, she said. She goes on down the bank. It gets stuck. First thing you know, there's a big bunch of fishermen. And she just acts like she's this little girl walking down. It's about 10 o'clock in the day now, you know. So she just walks on down the river, and she keeps her eye looking back sideways to see where she's going. That's why she passes by another group. Just keeps watching. Goes on a little farther. Keeps on goes on a little farther. After a while, she comes to a great big wall. Oh, my, it's going in behind this wall. What can she do? She don't know what to do. So she can't get on the wall, so she just wades out in the water and steps forward like this and crawls over the top. She gets over there, and she keeps walking. The first thing you know, she's in a beautiful garden. Flowers are blooming everywhere, and it's so pretty. Now listen, just a moment. I watch the little girl. Pretty flowers, and oh, the trees are all trimmed. It looks so pretty. It's a park. Oh, she said, looky there at that. Oh, my. I'm in the palace park. Pharaoh's palace in the park. What am I going to do here? If they'd ever catch me in here, oh, my. What would they do to me? And she watched that little art. 
And he kind of stops out there in the water and just float around out in the water. I wonder why. And she hears somebody talking. She sits back on the bushes. She sat and looks out like that. Mary and just begin to look out. Say, first thing you know, here comes some great, big, strong, dark man packing a canopy up like this. And the babies are falling along, and they're singing. And here comes a woman, and she's got a big gold band around her head with a big snake with his mouth open like that out in front of it. And she's a nice-looking woman. And she comes down, she has real pretty robes on and things. And I hear one of the maids say, Your Majesty, do you think the water will be warm this morning? Mary says, Majesty, oh, that must be law royalty, so I must be in the park. And if they catch me in here, what will they do for me? All right. She comes on down, and these big dark men packing this pole like this, walks down to the edge of the water like that, and she slips off her shoes, and one maid has the towels, and the other has the soap, and she's going down for her morning bath. So she goes down there, and she starts to, uh, to make ready for a bath. She slips off her shoes and says, I'll stick my toes in the water and see if it's warm. Oh, it's just nice. Just what is that out there? Old Mary, little Miriam says, oh, oh, she's done spy that off. Oh. She said, is that a crocodile? One of those big, strong men said, just a minute, I'll find out. Splash, splash, splash. Walks out into the water, picks it up like this and walks in. Said, your majesty, gives it to the maid. And the maid takes it over and gives it to her like that. And she sets it down. She said, what is it? Whew, got tar all over it. Look here, it's got a hole in the top of it. And Miriam said, oh, oh, there goes my little brother. There goes my little brother. And so they opened it up like this. Oh, it was a baby. And it began the prettiest little baby in the world. And all a God who could cause hate could cause love. And all the love that he could put in a human's heart, a mother for a child, he put in that girl's heart. And she, she said, it's one of the... He, I know what it is. It's that ill father of mine. He's so mean. He called all them little Hebrew children to be killed. And one of them mothers, they just sold their baby out, expecting to land wherever it may. Oh, he's wicked. Well, he'll not kill this one because this one's mine. Mm-hmm. See how God's are doing? <laughs> she picked him up and she kisses him. And the baby cried. And when he cried, it just warmed her heart. She said, poor little thing. She said, I'll take him, and I'm going to call him. I'm going to give him a name. And there's where he got his name. What was his name? Moses. And Moses means took out of the water. See? She said, I'll call him Moses, and he'll be my own baby. I'll keep him. But now, she said, but I'm a maid. I can't nurse him. I, I, I don't have a way of feeding him. They didn't have these bottles and things. And women didn't smoke cigarettes and get like they do now. He's been part of the so said, well, uh, you know, he said, uh, uh, what, what do I do? So she said, I, one of them said, I'll tell you, Your Majesty, I'll find a wet nurse for your baby. Oh, she said, that's very good. A little something, spoke, an angel standing there at the bush said, Miriam, there's your chance. There's your chance. Little Miriam went around and said, don't you say a thing now. Don't you let on. You go out and say you'll find the nurse and go get your mother. All right. So she said that. She said, Your Majesty. Ordinary, she said, what are you doing in here? But see, God has covered it all over. Why? You have 10,000 angels on the march. See? His program's going to work out. He had 10,000 angels standing there. So the first thing you know, said, said, yes, little dear, what are you doing here? She said, I've just seen you with the baby. said, I know where there's a nice mother that would take care of your baby for you. She said, go get her and tell her that I'll give her $300 a week to take care of this baby. And I'll give her a whole suite of rooms over in the palace. And if you know where there's a Hebrew woman that's a wet nurse that can nurse this baby, this is my baby. said, yes, Your Majesty, I'll get you one. So now, wait a minute. Before you go into the castle, you've got to have a password. See, you don't know the password. Each day we have a password. Now the password today, you know what it was? A pitchfork and a load of hay. So that's what you have to say to get through the gate. So little Miriam cuts off down home hard. She goes jump over the wall, down over the street, and down this way, and down this way. Hard she goes. She runs the house. And, and a- Amram had just come home at Jehoshaphat. And oh, they were sad. Wondering what. Oh, she said, my poor baby. My poor baby. She, he said, I've just listened. 
that I just come by a while ago down there on the street and that poor mother has kept everybody up all day. They come right through this neighborhood this morning and they busted every baby's head there was in the neighborhood and said how they were screaming and crying. Now, I don't know where your baby, wherever it is, where our baby is, God will take care of it. Just then someone, oh, oh, there they are at the door now. So they went and looked. Oh, it wasn't. It was Miriam. She said, oh, oh, Miriam, come in, dear. What happened to the baby? She said, mother, I'm so hungry. Said, but what happened to the baby? Said, I'm about to starve, mother. Said, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm about to starve, mother. Said, but what happened to the baby? Said, mother, I'm so hungry, I can eat everything in the house. Said, we'll get you something to eat, but what happened to the baby? Said, oh, the baby's all right, mother. Get us something to eat. Oh, I'm so happy. Well, what happened to it? Well, uh, give me something to eat. I'm just about starved. <laughs> Could you imagine that? She said, Miriam, this is your mother and dad. Where is the baby? She said, Mother, I told you, the baby, I saw it, and it's all right. Now, Mother, give me something to eat. I'm starved. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just about starved like you are when you come home from school, you know. Oh, just got to have something. So she went and got her sandwich and said, Now tell me. And she went, No, 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 Said, Mother, said, Yes, what happened to the baby? I said, Mother, she told her the story. And said, Mother, you go get out your best clothes and get your suitcase packed. Because you're going to take care of the baby. <laughs> what? If you lose it, you'll find it again. Is that right? If you keep it, you'll lose it. If you get it, lose it, you'll find it. Is that right? And little Mary just to eat in that way. Said, yes. Said, you're going to the palace today. And not only that, but you're going to give me, give me $300 a week. And the best rooms in the nation to take care of your own baby. First time in all the world's history where a mother was ever paid to nurse her own baby. See, I got that. Hallelujah. Nurse your own baby and got three hundred dollars a week for in the best rooms in the country. God does things, doesn't he? Does it pay to pray? Is it good to pray? So she got her own suitcase ready. We'll hurry now. We're going to close just in a minute. So we, she got her suitcase ready, and down the road she went, just as hard as she could go. And the first thing you know, she comes, big old guard standing there, these great big spears, said, Who was that? She said, A pitchfork and a load of hay. Pass it on. <laughs> See how God does things? Went to the next guard. There he drew his sword, said, Who are you? Hold on there. She said, A pitchfork and a load of hay. She said, Pass on. <laughs> My See how God does things? Going going up to the palace, starts up in the hall of royalty, comes out, pulls her sword. Who goes there? Set a pitchfork and a load of hay. Passed on in. First thing you know, a man walked out. Said, are you the little lady that he, her majesty is waiting for? Yes. And is this the wet nurse for the baby was found this morning? Yes. Said, well, bring her in. So she brings the baby in, or uh, brings the mother in, and... And uh, the little princess walked out, and she said, Do you know anything about babies? She said, Yes, Your Majesty. She said, Look at this baby. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> yes. Said, Can you know how to nurse a baby? Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> sure. Well, he said, um, I'll give you your wages at $300 a week. Mm. Wasn't God good? And said, and you got the best rooms in the palace. And your meals will be sent to you. You only have to come out and cook your own meal. So now here's the baby. Be careful, don't drop you. Oh, don't worry, I won't. <laughs> don't worry, I won't drop it. You take the best of care of it. Don't you worry, I will. <laughs> It'll have the very best care. <laughs> sure, it was her own. <laughs> see? I'll give it the very best care. You see, it's a beautiful baby. Very beautiful, she said. All right. Close went the door on Miriam and her mother and little Moses. And when the door was closed, she looked all around. She said, and she thought you were her baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my she petted it. What had she done? She 
You should have kept it. What was she done? So she gave it back to the one who gave it to her, and she what? Found it, and she can keep it. Now, what happens if we lose? If we keep our soul, what happens? We will lose it. And if we give it back to the one who gave it to us, what will happen? We'll keep it. Is that right? How many of you all would like to come up around the altar and pray? Would you like to do it? Would you like for Jesus to take care of you like he did them little babies? How, let's all little children gather around the altar here now. Will you do it? Come right around and kneel around the altar. Let's pray, all of you. All the little children now, come up here. Do you like my story about this? Do you like that? All right. Now you come right up around the altar. Now come, all you little children, come kneel right around the altar. Just kneel down right there, on, right there on the altar. That's good. All you little ones in the back, come here now. We're going to pray. All right. No, come up and pray. Come up and kneel around the altar. That's right. Now, that's good. That's just all that. Now, the mothers, you want to come too? Dad, you want to kneel in the aisle? Now, I want to ask you, little children, something here. Look. Do you believe that Jesus loves you just like he did in Moses? Do you believe that angels watch you like this? Now, God gave you a soul, didn't he? Now, if you keep your soul, what will happen to you? You'll lose it. But if you get it back to Jesus this morning, then what you going to do? You'll go keep it to your soul. Now, you want to save your soul, don't you? And you want to grow up to be real mothers and real ladies, don't you? Real men, preachers and so forth. Don't you want to do that? Now, if you do, then you give your soul to Jesus. Here's the way you do it. You say, dear Jesus, this is all I've got to give you is my soul. But you watch over me like you did Moses. Now, with some of you older ones all coming to you, too, some of you mothers, maybe that you might want to kneel here this morning. Let's open for you, too. If you will come kneel right along here, that's fine. There's a mother coming with her little boy. For somebody else, father, daddy, any of you. If you want to be a praying man, like uh, Amram was, you come kneel too. Mother, if you want to be like Jehoshaphat, well, you come right along and kneel too. Sure, it's for everybody. Because what? you got a soul too. If you keep it, what will happen? Lose it. If you give it back to the one who gave it to you, what will happen? You'll save it to everlasting life. That's right. I want you to gather around all of you who will now. And let's have prayer with these little ones and with, our, with all now. Mother's Day, a wonderful day. And maybe tonight I might change my subject and go on tonight and tell what that mother did, how that mother did. She was the one who educated her little boy to lead all of Israel to the promised land. Oh, she was a real mother. Wasn't she a real mother? Now, you got a real mother, too. And mother's praying for you. He was a real daddy. And daddy's praying for you. And now we're all going to pray together and ask Jesus to help us. Brother Neville, would you come kneel with us? Let's all bow our heads everywhere. Now, Sister Gertie. Dear Heavenly Father, this little simple story today about a, the long days that have gone by for a true father and mother, a true believer, come to you. And they worshiped you, they believed you. There was a distress in the land of the night. And how do we know that there's not a modern little boy to heal here this morning? How do we know that there's not a mother who Mary and knelt here this morning, too? The prophet. Oh, Father, dear, these little children love you. And they come kneeling at the cross, recognizing that they got a soul that must be saved, and they're given to you now. For we have just read in your word, if you lose it, you shall find it. And if you keep it, you lose it. And Father, they don't want to keep their soul to themselves. They don't want to live to themselves. They want to give their soul to you so that by giving it, they find eternal life with granted Lord. Bless all these little boys and girls around the altar. Bless the mothers and fathers that share this morning. Oh, may thy loving grace and mercy be upon them all. Forgive us, Lord, of all our sins and shortcomings. Take pictures from our ministry. And the angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. God, you who commanded Gabriel. Amen. And 10,000 angels went on the march. How many more angels come around Amen. when you see these poor little children kneeling in the hall this morning? All around the hall, through the church, and this is the gospel. The recording angel is 
church. Take your knees down and look. They're losing their soul. So they can find it in Christ. Grant it, Lord. May them this day henceforth their little eyes be humble. May they be obedient children to their parents and to their heavenly fathers until the day that you call them home. God is in their little heart, down to every world. Every time you get stuck in the bushes, may the angels of God push it off into the pouring currents of God's love. Grant it, Lord. And at the end of the road, may they find a loving home. And their mother and their loved ones there in glory, for God stands the gate to welcome them today. Grant it, Father, forgive us all of our sins and trials, and help us in this day to be holy times. We commit these little children into our hands now, and these mothers with them, Lord, that they will be the right kind of mothers upon this Mother's Day, this memorial time that's given to mothers. And may they from this day be better mothers. May the children be better children. May we all be better, Lord. And serve be greater. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, as we go to the Lord, do you want Jesus to Do you want Jesus to want to walk you out while you stand up? Raise up your hand like this. I want you to turn around to Dad and Brother Lord. Turn around this way. I look here, Brother Dad. All you little girls and boys stand up. Now, how many accept Jesus as your Savior, and you go to trust Jesus from now on to take care of you like you do the most? And this is your hand for every one of you. That's not. Now, what happens? If you keep your soul, you what? Lose it. But if you give it to Jesus, what happens? You'll keep it. Now, what? Jesus has got you now this morning. You're Jesus now, aren't you? You're Jesus, little boy, you're a 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 little boy, Amen. A man in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bring them in from the
Come out up here, every one of you. Move out of your wine. See, walk up here, look like this. I said, no, come out up here. I like it. I turn around like this. Look out the door. I like this. I want to show you what nice little boys and girls these are. After they go, Jesus. I come right back to the door. Now, I'll be out there. Now, I'll be out there. You march in the You march too. Now, I'll say, I may never ride in the cavalry. You do the same thing. Now, stay back with me. Go way back. Now, I'll let you do it. Way back. Go way back. Now, go with me. them and brought them up and so have these little children good mothers and dads and i pray father that you'll watch over them and stir them down the stream of time and may the angels of god protect them give and then be at the receiving end to receive them in the last days lord into your kingdom we ask in christ's name amen now you may go back to your seat and tell daddy and mother how good you feel amen Jesus with you as a shield from every foe. All right. Take God. 